Hello everyone, I'm Sri and this is my video report for Lab 3, which is the magnetic field of a bar magnet lab. The purpose of this lab is to measure the distance dependence of the magnetic field due to a small bar magnet, and we use the Bio Savart law to calculate the magnetic field of the magnet on axis and off axis. We have to use GlowScript to calculate and model the magnetic field of a bar magnet, and then we compare the two values and see how they differ. Some physics principles that we'll be needing are the Bio Savart law which is the top left picture, the on-axis magnetic field formula, which is shown at the top right picture, the magnetic field formula using the constants found from the graph, which is the bottom right picture. For the model, the system of this experiment is the phone slash magnetometer, which is also the observation location, and the surroundings is the bar magnet because it produces the magnetic field. We can also treat the bar magnet as a magnetic dipole. So in the picture on the bottom left, we know that the dipole moment points from south to north and the picture on the right shows the magnetometer app on your phone. So the procedure of this experiment was to first find where the magnetometer sensor is located on your phone and you could do that by following the steps shown on the pictures at the top right. Next we need to align our phone with the magnetic north pole and we can find where the magnetic north pole is by seeing where the x component is closest to zero on the magnetometer app. Next, we need to measure the distances needed, which are shown on the, pre the spreadsheet, and I'll show you the spreadsheet in a few slides. So for the preview of the results, the magnetic dipole moment is 4.513 amps meters squared. The calculated off-axis magnetic field equals 7.48 times 10 to the negative five Tesla. The off-axis magnetic field computed using GlowScript equals 9.46 times 10 to the negative 5 Tesla. So this is the data, and this is the spreadsheet that I was referencing in the previous slide. So we can find the distance from the magnetometer and the bar magnet for different X component values. And we could see the graph that those values make on the right. These are some of my calculations. So to first calculate the magnetic dipole moment, I set the formulas of the magnetic fields equal to each other, and those formulas are shown on the top right. And I was able to derive a formula for the magnetic dipole moment. And from the graph, I was able to find the constants n and ln of k, which I later used to find the constant k. And I was able to plug in those values to find the magnetic dipole moment, which equals 4.513 amps meters squared. This is some of the code I wrote for this lab. So first I copied and pasted some of the starter code that was given and replaced some of the values there with the values I measured in this lab. So first in the code, you could see I defined some of the constants that I'll be using later in the code. And next I defined a function that would take in values mu and r and output the magnetic field magnitude that I'll be using later. And next I placed some arrows that will be shown in the visual model and that will be shown in the next slide. So this is the output of my code. These arrows represent different magnetic fields, and you could see that the code outputted a magnitude of B at 45 degrees at distance D of 9.46 times 10 to the negative 5 Tesla. These are some of my conclusions. The magnetic dipole moment equals 4.513 amps meters squared. And the calculated off-axis magnetic field is 7.48 times 10 to the negative 5 Tesla. And the off-axis magnetic field computed using GlowScript equals 9.46 times 10 to the negative 5 Tesla. And by using the percent difference formula, I found that these two values had a 26.5% difference. Some sources of error. There could have been other sources of magnetic fields nearby, such as like my computer or something else. There could have been measurement errors that I made, and my phone could have been rotated during measurements, which I wasn't supposed to do. So for the what-if questions, for the first what-if question, the graph would have looked the same, but the magnet magnitudes of the magnetic dipole moment and the magnetic field would have changed. And for the second what-if question, we could treat the two identical magnets as a larger bar magnet, and the magnetic field produced would be stronger. Thank you for watching my video report for Lab 3.